Hi, this is John. This two-part video series will be on making your own custom fiberglass nose cones. This first part will be on making the mold, and a second video will be on pulling your fiberglass nose cone from that mold. The first thing we need to do is obtain our mold plug. This is a turning made out of wood or some similar inexpensive material that is the same shape as the nose cone we want to produce. This will be a positive. The mold will be made over it, making a negative. The plug will be discarded, and the part will be made out of the mold, again producing this shape. A couple of things to notice. The shoulder should be extra long, at least an inch longer than the shoulder that you want in the finished part. The plug should be as smooth as possible in the turning, although we're going to prime it and sand it and make it really smooth before we make the plug. The final thing to notice, the shoulder should be an easy fit into the tubes. Of course, you don't want it sloppy, but you don't want it overly tight either. We'll add a little to the diameter when we're making it smooth, and we don't want it to be too tight to fit into our tubing. Before we do anything else, we're going to mark a line on the bottom bisecting the base of the plug. This will help us when we're registering it with the base plate. We're going to be handling this plug a lot, so I like to build a handle into its base. What I'll do, drill a hole in the center, get a dowel, and use glue. This will be one of the few places in your rocket where you can use white glue. Then we can take a scrap piece of wood, drill a hole in it, and we can set the handle of our plug into that hole whenever we need to rest it between steps. And the first of those steps will be to seal the brain of the plug. We're going to be wet sanding this before we're done, so we want to make sure that water won't seep into the plug. I've had problems with plugs that were glued up from multiple blanks with water seeping in and expanding unevenly. So painting the plug with a layer of thin epoxy will prevent that from happening. Now we don't want too much epoxy, we just want to saturate the grain. So paint it on thoroughly, but as thinly as possible. Okay, once the plug is sealed, it's time to begin the process of smoothing the surface. I've taken the plug after sealing, sanded it roughly, 100 grit sandpaper, and then sprayed on some primer. This is just plain old rattle can primer. Once the primer is on, we need to work on the alternating filling, sanding, and priming cycle that you've done for finishing your rockets. The end result should be smooth with no pits in just exactly the shape that you want your eventual nose cone to be. Normally I'm not a big fan of Bondo, but here it's fine. We don't care about the weight and Bondo has the advantage that it takes a very good uh, smooth sanded surface. So we look for any little irregularities. For wooden turned nose cones, the trickiest area is at the ends of the turning. Now the bottom of the turning we don't care about, but the tip we want to be nice and smooth. So I'm looking for any little pits or other irregularities to fill. Once you have the plug primed, filled, and cleaned to your satisfaction, now it's time to sand. I prefer to wet sand when I can, and because we sealed the wood with epoxy, we can wet sand. So we'll go through a succession of papers. This is freshly primed after a few alternations of priming and filling. I'm going to start with 220, 320, and then finish up with 400. You can also go to 600 uh, if you want, but I don't think that's necessary.
Now when you wet sand, you need to obviously use wet, dry sandpaper. And you just want a trickle of water, just enough to carry, just enough to carry the dust away. Um, and you don't want to start too coarse because you'll take off the primer. The primer itself is already reasonably smooth, just a little bit rough. So we're going to start with 220 very lightly and then move to 320 and finally 420. And the thing, the surface should be totally smooth when we're done. So we pull the 220, make sure it's damp, and just begin to gently sand here. You don't want to go overboard with the coarser grades because you'll sand right through your surface. You can also feel very quickly it starts to get smooth. And when it feels smooth over the whole surface at one grit, we'll move on to the finer grit. And then once we've completed our wet sanding, we can dry off the, pl the plug, make sure it's smooth everywhere, which you can tell really easily by feel. And we have a nice usable plug. Now it's important for us to get the surface smooth and pit free because we're going to end up covering it with epoxy. In addition to all this priming and sanding, we're going to take additional steps to protect it. But we want to start with a good, smooth, hard, blemish free surface. So the next step after sanding and having a dry plug is to put on wax. You can use mold release wax from Partol. I bought this a long time ago, it's still going strong. And there's another brand here that I've also used, which is made by uh, Megan Nars, and it's called Miraglaze Mold Release Wax. Doesn't really matter. Uh, you want two towels. One you're going to use to wipe it on, and then you let it glaze, and the other you polish it off. So essentially we wipe it on, let it glaze over, and then polish it off. And the process will cause wax to fill up any tiny little pores left over after sanding. Okay, so first step is to put the wax on. You can load up your first towel with a good load of wax and just start wiping it on. You'll feel some friction as you wax over areas that have already been waxed, but just go ahead and apply it. Try to get it all over the surface. Make sure we cover every bit. One especially tricky area is the shoulder, so make sure that your shoulder is waxed as well. So after five or ten minutes, the wax will glaze over, get kind of a dull surface, and then we'll buff it off. So we'll take the different towel that you didn't put the wax on with and use that as our buffer. Now again, if you're using a large surface, you can use a power buffer, like for cars, but again, for this nose cone, you just do it by hand. Notice how it's starting to get smooth as I buff. So I'm doing two things. One is I'm making a smooth surface, and I'm also taking off the excess wax. Now that we have our plug prepared, it's time to work on the parting board. The parting board is a piece of masonite with some ribs, and the purpose of this is to allow us to bury the plug halfway in. Then we'll make the first half of the mold, then we'll pull it out and make the second half of the mold. So the importance of this is to get a very close outline that matches the profile at the center point of the plug. What I like to do is get a piece of masonite, make a rough cut on a bandsaw, slightly undersize, then attach it to some ribs. Here I've just epoxied them. And then get the final fit by trial and error. We want the plug to fit as tightly as possible. Not tight as in having to pound it in place, but tight as in minimizing gaps. Once we have the parting board mounted to its ribs, we want to adjust the opening to fit tightly around the plug. So, we just do that by repeatedly test fitting and adjusting. You can also see why we have the mark on the bottom. We can tell 
when we buried half into the parting board by the mark, which should line up with the top of the parting board when we're done. So we deliberately cut this slightly undersized. You can go in and find the tight spots, mark them with a pencil, then use your sure form plane or any other equivalent tool to adjust. Then just keep repeating the process until the plug slides in and is perfectly matched all the way around. Once you've got it to size, use some miscellaneous blocks underneath to shim it up so that it stays. We want it to slide into place, but we don't want it to fall all the way through when we're trying to work on it. So use some blocks and line it up so that it's sturdy and we can work on it. Normally I put a block in front of the tip and a block in the base, but this nose cone has such a flat tip that it couldn't really be blocked. So I blocked it in the middle and the base, and I'll just be careful when working on this side. Anyway, you can see our line is even with the top of the parting board, relatively clean all around, and now we're ready to continue with the parting board work itself. So masonite's a good hard surface and very smooth but we want to make sure that epoxy doesn't stick to it. So just like we did with the plug, we're going to wax the parting board. Exact same deal. Wipe on the wax. Let it glaze over and then polish it off. So once the parting board has been waxed twice, we're ready to place the plug into it and begin final preparations for making the first mold half. So to fill in these gaps, we use clay. I don't know if it really matters. I've had this clean clay for a while, which seems to work well for me. So you get a bit of clay, roll it into a small snake, and squeeze it in to the gap to seal up any gap between the parting board and the plug. To make sure it's flat, take a popsicle stick, cut the end square, and then peel off the, any excess. Now we have a very tight seal and a square edge. Do that all around wherever there are gaps. Mold making is a great way to use up scraps of fiberglass. I've taken leftover cloth, cut it into squares and rectangles, just divided it up uh, based on the pieces that I had. I like to use smaller pieces and layer it on rather than making form pieces. The advantage of the smaller pieces is you're less likely to get compound curves that prevent the cloth from lying flat. And it's not really cosmetic at this point, it's just a matter of strength. And so we can get the number of layers we need from smaller pieces just as easily as larger pieces. Speaking of the number of layers, you want your mold to be about three times as thick as the part you're going to pull. Since we want to make the part with like a one layer of two ounce and three layers of six ounce glass, I'm going to triple that, use two layers of four ounce glass, and nine layers of six ounce glass. So I have enough scraps to cover the whole thing enough times. Again, we're just gonna make one of the mold halves in this step. And finally, to make sure the epoxy won't stick at all, we paint the plug and the parting board with PVA. This is best sprayed, but it can also be brushed. Areas that are gonna be problematic are the sharp corners. The cloth, the, uh, cloth will make a corner to some extent, but not that sharp. So we'll need to fill that in with epoxy. So I've gotten the same laminating epoxy that I'm using for the mold, but I've thickened it with fibers. And I'll make a small fillet all the way around. And then the rest is easy. We just place on our cloth pieces of four ounce first, followed by six ounce. 
It'll stick to the already wet parts. Then we put on some more epoxy on any dry spots. And we'll just do this repeatedly until we get the full thickness that we want for the mold, which again should be about three times as thick as the part that you want to pull from it. Now for this first layer where it's easy to see through the cloth, make sure there are no bubbles. You can kind of massage the fillet underneath the first layer. Make sure it's smooth and even. See this bubble? Make sure we get the bubbles out. As we get more layers, we won't be able to see through it anymore. So make sure you have no bubbles from the first layer. Okay, we're going to wait till it's fully cured to remove it from the parting board. But one thing we can do that's a little bit easier at the leather stage is to cut away the excess. So we're going to cut away the fiberglass beyond a nice margin of like an inch or an inch and a quarter around the edges of the plug. And this is really easy to do at the leather stage. Now that the first half is fully cured, we're going to separate it from the parting board. But we want to be careful and leave the plug and the mold together and separate both from the parting board. Now, it may just come off, but if it sticks, it's often helpful to have small wedges to help separate it. work the wedges in all the way around as needed or it may just pop out. Now we're going to basically do the same thing again for the second half. To start with we'll clean up any clay from where we sealed the edges of the parting board. We're done with the parting board to an extent but it's still useful to support the half mold. So cut a strip out of the inside to give clearance so we can set the half mold in and have it supported. Just cut enough to clear the fillet so you can set it in like that. Now that we have a nice base to work with again, we'll continue. Wipe off any PVA on the mold and the plug lightly with alcohol. And then I like to give one final wax now this is actually pretty smooth, but just to make sure that the second half of epoxy doesn't stick to it, we're going to go ahead and make sure it's completely full with wax and get the, the other half of the plug at the same time. So the plug is waxed, painted again with PVA, and we're ready to go ahead and make the second half of the mold. Once again, exact same thing as the first half. Four ounce cloth to start. And then the bulk with six ounce cloth. So once again, paint a coat of epoxy over everything. Create fillets around the edges. And then apply the cloth. Once again, I like to do the shoulder first because I'm going to also create a fillet right at the corner of the shoulder. You have to be really careful with the first layer to make sure it lies flat, tight against the parting board and the plug. And that's why it's nice to use a little bit of finer cloth for the first layer. Once we get our first layer on, 
we can more quickly apply the heavier cloth. And then once we have the second half laminated, again, make sure there are no air bubbles or soft spots, and we let it sit to the leather stage. At the leather stage, I trimmed off the excess of the second side, and then now that the part is full cured, we're ready to take the mold apart. One thing first is to provide some means for registering the two halves when we make the part. I like to use these little clips, but to do them, you need to drill one eighth holes. So I'll drill a series of eighth inch holes in the lip all the way around. And finally, we're ready to take the plug out of the mold. It may come out by hand, or you might need to use little wedges. I have these little plastic wedges that I can work in around the edge. And once you've got them separated, which it should do relatively easily, you have your two mold halves. Carefully check to see if you have any imperfections in the mold. You might have air bubbles or soft spots. Those can easily be filled. Just make sure that you sand fully after with very fine sandpaper. So that was part one. In part two of this video, we'll take our halves and make our nose count.